Right now, Jennifer Stefano is on the line with us, the Republican strategist, vice president of the Commonwealth Foundation, fellow with the Independent Women's Forum. Uh, CommonwealthFoundation.org is the website. Uh, Jennifer's uh, Twitter handle is Jennifer Stefano, S-T-E-F-A-N-O, spelled pretty much just like it sounds. And uh, Jennifer, uh, inflation, are, are Republicans going to use this monster of inflation to scare people away from the Build Back Better plan? Is that, is that the, the scheme here? Well, no, Joe Biden and the Democrats are already doing it admirably. I mean, I can't imagine what they could do to be more unpopular other than take puppies out onto the East Lawn and start shooting them. This is not what the uh, American They're opposed to guns. Not what they want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wh I, I don't get this, Jennifer. I'm, maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe I'm dense. Um, my understanding is that inflation is caused by one of two things, either a shortage of goods... Uh, as we saw with the Arab oil embargo back in the 70s, or a reduction in the value of the currency, as we saw when Nixon in 1971 uh, devalued the U.S. currency by 11 percent, and then the next year devalued it by 10 percent relative to the pound and the German mark and whatnot. And that uh, 21 percent devaluation over a two-year period led to, over about a decade following that, about 20 percent inflation. Um, how does government spending cause inflation? I've never, I've never seen that in any economics textbook. Sure, you have. No, um, I haven't. That's how you value the dollar. You flood the market with more of them. Since Joe Biden took office, there has been five trillion government dollars thrown into the economy. That hype that devalues. The dollar at the same time, the government paid people to stay home and not work. And that's why we have a massive shortage. It's why there's um, problems at our ports and problems anywhere you go in America. It puts an enormous burden on the American worker in two ways. Number one, for those still left standing, it's just stressful day in and day out. And number two, now our dollars, when we go to buy milk, when we go to buy gas, when we go to heat our homes this winter, all being driven up by bad government policies under President, Obi President Biden and the Democrats. It's very problematic. Yeah, so, so you, what you're saying is that when the federal government spends money, that causes inflation because it's dollars going into the, into the system. But those dollars are also coming out of the system. The government, in order to spend that money, has to either borrow it or, or tax it. I mean, it's, it, it, this is not the Fed. The federal spending is not... Fed, the Fed is what in, you know, creates or, or destroys uh, our currency, our, our money. The Fed determines the, you know, the number of dollars in circulation. Federal, federal spending has absolutely nothing to do with that. This is, a, this is a nonsense argument, Jennifer. No, it's not a nonsense argument. If we can continue to look at the trajectory of what's happening, and it hurts the American worker. If you look so, at no, the No, wait a second. Where, where are these dollars being invented? I mean, I, I will give you that the Fed, you know, in, in an effort to solve the, the, the Bush crash in 2008, flooded the, flooded the, you know, the, the, the world with dollars. Uh, I think it was like 23 trillion or something like that. They pulled back an awful lot of that, but that had to be inflationary. And I'll give you that right now we've got a goods shortage because we've got this giant traffic jam between us and China, in part because China shut down, you know, the Shanghai and one, uh, Weibo or whatever, the, the, the two largest ports for about a month because they had COVID over there. Plus, we are recovering from COVID. And so there's this explosion in demand for goods. I, you know, I get all that. And those things will cause inflation. And you're right, inflation's real. But... It, th it has absolutely nothing to do with federal spending. Federal spending does not cause inflation. I, no, no rational economist has ever proposed that. So and when you're suggesting that when the Republicans did it, it was the cause of inflation, but when the Democrats no. do it, it's... No, I'm saying that when the, when the federal government spends money, that's money going out, and if the money only went out... Then and, and you know if the if the federal government invented a trillion new dollars and threw them out into the marketplace, yeah, you might have a one hundredth of one percent inflation as a consequence of that because it's that that would be about that share of the number of dollars in circulation around the planet. But the fact of the matter is, if the government spends a trillion dollars, they f they have to either borrow that trillion dollars or they have to raise it in taxes, which makes it a, a closed loop. It's not they're not yeah. it's not just magic money falling out of the sky. Sure it is. It's magic money flowing out of the sky that the... That's coming from somewhere. 
endless, endless stimulus plan, and they put out money not for value. They were not buying goods. They were not buying services. The federal government put money into the economy, just handed it willy-nilly to the states. They could do whatever they wanted. For half the states, the money's sitting in reserve funds that are already flush with cash for education and other things. Which has no nothing idea. to do with inflation. Hyper, it is high. At the same time, when you pay people not to work, there is money in the economy that did not Jennifer, you money. have a bunch of Republican states that cut off the $300 extra benefit back in June when it actually expired at the end of October. In none of those states, not one, I defy you to name one state where they saw as a result of cutting off benefits to people an increase in employment. And in fact, when you look at the states that have the highest rate of unemployed people right now who have voluntarily quit. There are 10 states that constitute the, the, uh, well over 80% of all the people who have quit their jobs in the United States. Those 10 states are Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Tennessee. What do those 10 states have in common? They have the highest rates of COVID infection in the nation, and they're all right to work for less states. So there's basically no union. So you've got a bunch of people who've got crappy minimum wage jobs in the middle of, of the worst pandemic in the country. Actually, in all of those states, you've got a pandemic that's worse than any other developed country in the world. And those people are saying, no, I don't want to go to the workplace. But again, that, you know, this, you know, nothing to do with government spending. And it's certainly, you know, we're not paying people not to work. You take away those benefits, people are not going back to work. They're afraid of dying. No, Tom. People, these are states that also have the highest levels of poverty and that there's enormous government program and government cash flowing to them and still fails to solve the problem and address it. You know, in America, we can address and, and, and take care of material poverty, but what you cannot address and cannot change is what really is needed. And I think the continuing of the government playing the role that private philanthropy used to do is part of this enormous problem. Now, we could debate that is a totally separate issue, and we could go on ad infinitum on that. So but going back... So why, Martin, why is it, Jennifer, that these 10 Republican-controlled states, as you said, they're the poorest states in the Union, why is it that the Republican-controlled states tend to be in poverty and have, you know, real crises with obesity and heart disease and all kinds of, you know, health problems, and the Democratically-controlled states are doing really well and they don't have these poverty problems, and they're, and they're not having the problem of people quitting their jobs? Why would that so be? Let me a question on you. Why is it in the states where there are the largest Democrat-loving big government programs like Medicaid, are people not getting healthier? Why do you continue to say they are. that government health care is so good for all of us? I don't see any of the northern left liberal progressives taking Medicaid, but instead you foist it on to everybody else and say it's a good thing, and then you want to stand it to all the other states. I so don't why understand what you're saying, Jennifer. The, you've got 12 states that have not expanded Medicaid. 12 states. All, every single one of them is controlled by Republicans. Every single one of them is a former slave state. And those are the states where you've got the deepest poverty in the United States. Well, yes, and why aren't the big Democrat pro programs working there? I'd like to reverse the question. They're not we working never there because the Republicans are blocking them. That you want, okay, we have Medicaid in these states, and you just made a great point, that people aren't healthy there, that they have some of the worst health outcomes of anyone, which is, by the way, what you see even in northern states for people on government-run health care, i.e. Medicaid. So why, Tom, why aren't you addressing the fact that these programs don't work for people, that they hurt people, and that people are getting healthier and better? There Medicaid, fact, has, been, Medicaid has been demonstrated to help people. <laughs> When, when states no, expand Medicaid, Medicaid, they get better health outcomes. That's, that's not in dispute. This is absolutely, on Medicaid, people get worse health outcomes than even those without insurance. And that was studies done pre-Obamacare. Oh, come on. Okay. That, that is so counterintuitive. You're telling, you're telling me that when you tell people that they can't have access to health care unless they can come up with thousands and thousands of dollars, which they don't have, that they're going to have a better outcome, a health outcome, than when they have access to health care because they have Medicaid. Seriously? I'm I encourage you to look at the studies done in the pre-Obamacare era of the differential in health outcomes between individuals who had no insurance and individuals on Medicaid. And then I would like you to answer, because I still search for this myself, why these big government programs do not work. I don't want to hurt people. I don't think Democrats want to hurt people. I don't think Republicans want to hurt people. I think we want solutions to this. Send me so the study, of Jennifer, and we can discuss it you know, the next time around, because I don't know what you're talking about. This makes no sense. But... Um... Okay. Jennifer, thank you for dropping by today. I, I, I appreciate it. Uh, Jennifer Stefano, uh, Republican strategist, vice president of the Commonwealth Foundation, commonwealthfoundation.org. Jennifer Stefano on Twitter. Jennifer, thank you. I'm a little baffled here. <laughs>
First of all, inflation is caused by reducing the value of the dollar or there being a shortage of goods, which drives up their price. And I don't see how either of those have anything to do with government spending. Uh, you could actually build a case that some small part of the inflation that we're experiencing right now is the result of increased demand for goods, which everybody acknowledges, uh, in part because Christmas is coming, but mostly because, you know, for a year we kind of lived like moles in our mole holes, um, and now people are starting to get out and they're starting to buy things and stuff like that. Um, so, you could say that giving people unemployment benefits has allowed them to continue buying things, which keeps demand high, which may have something to do with inflation, but government spending in and of itself, that makes no sense. That just makes no sense at all.